trial is a great idea for an episode. You could probably even stretch this premise into a movie. Well, according to a few places online, that actually was the case at one point. This was going to be the first Batman animated series feature, until the producers changed their minds and went with Mask of the Phantasm instead. I've seen this mentioned a lot wherever this episode is brought up, but I couldn't find the source interview or quotes that started the story, so we'll just have to call this a rumor. I will say though, it does make some sense. Janet Van Dorn is the successor to Harvey Dent as Gotham's district attorney. Recently, she's been pushing hard to prosecute Batman for creating the very villains he brings in. She later has a dinner date with Bruce Wayne where they further debate the Batman's place in Gotham, but soon after she excuses herself from the table, Janet is abducted. Commissioner Gordon calls the Dark Knight to police HQ where he shows him an ominous letter that arrived with Van Dorn's glasses case. Batman is summoned by the note to the Gotham courthouse in order to save the DA, but when he arrives, he's jumped by Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn who knock him out with one of Ivy's barbs and take him to Arkham where the lunatics are now running the asylum. The Mad Hatter's technology has rendered the staff hapless fools and enabled the building to be overtaken by its prisoners. It's soon made clear what's going on. The inmates at Arkham are putting Batman on trial. The Joker is the judge, Two-Face the prosecutor, and a roster of Batman's most dangerous villains sit on the jury. They echo Van Dorn's claim and accuse the caped crusader of making them the twisted souls they are now. The villains assign Van Dorn as Batman's defense lawyer, and the trial plays out in front of Arkham's unstable population. If Van Dorn can clear Batman of the charges, she'll go free. If not, she'll go down with him. The premise of Trial reminds me a bit of that part in The Dark Knight Rises where the Scarecrow becomes the judge in a court set up by Bane after he took over Gotham. Death! By exile. They brought the big guns out for this one, as Bruce Timm and Paul Dini are credited with the story. Dini wrote the teleplay himself and Dan Reba directed this fan favorite. Having Tim and Dini collaborating on the story lends more credence to the idea that this was originally meant to be a bigger project. Even though a concept this large in scale with so many characters thrown in might feel rushed in the 22 minute format, the Batman team pulled it off flawlessly. The plot is introduced quickly, but it doesn't seem like we're missing much of anything. Almost all of Batman's big villains get at least a few seconds to shine. Hang him! Shoot him! Hit him with a rock! Alluding back to some of their origins resulted in a few nice callbacks. You brainwashed and kidnapped a woman who rejected you. He was going to take her away from me. I had no choice. You could have respected her wishes and left her alone. I got killed her first! Oh, I'd like that last statement stricken from the record, please. Record? Is someone supposed to be writing this down? He should have let me bump off Harvey Dent. We'd all have been better off. Wouldn't we, Harv? Are you right there, right? Sad, isn't it? Harleen Quinzel was a doctor here at Arkham until the Joker twisted her mind. This was actually the first time Harley's origin as a psychiatrist in Arkham was mentioned in the series. We got the full story in the new Batman Adventures episode, Mad Love, that was translated from the comic of the same name by Deanie and Tim. Throwing in a taste of that here made Harley's backstory infinitely more interesting. Through questioning Batman's rogues gallery, Van Dorn ends up regretting her previous opinion. She discovers that all of Arkham's most dangerous criminals would have likely turned out the way they are without Batman's involvement. She makes such a good case of this that she actually convinces the jury to find Batman not guilty. However, the bad guys still attempt to kill her and the Dark Knight anyway. Before that, they gather around in a separate room to unmask the vigilante but Van Dorn saves the day by knocking out a light with a batarang that she had on her from earlier. Don't let him get away! Who says I'm leaving? In the darkness, Batman intimidates and KOs a few villains before fleeing with Van Dorn. The police finally arrive thanks to a tracking device left by the Caped Crusader, and the day is saved. I see now there's a need for the things you do, but I'm still going to work toward a city that doesn't need Batman. Me too. It's too bad that this was the last appearance of Janet Van Dorn, because I thought she really worked here. The character only made one other appearance prior to trial in Season 1's Shadow of the Bat Part 1. For that episode, she was voiced by Lynette Meddy. 
but here she's played by Stephanie Zimbalist. Zimbalist is actually the daughter of the voice of Alfred, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., and apparently met Kevin Conroy when they both attended Juilliard. That last part could be just a rumor, but it's good to hear that this casting was all in the Bat family. I really like Trial. It's a must-see installment of the series, and even if you've watched it before, it's fun to go back and see all those villains interact with each other in the same episode. It's not quite almost got him, but it works for what it is. My verdict? Guilty. Of being a classic. Abity, 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 that's all, folks.